All right, how's everybody doing? This is the Comic Samurai. I want to welcome you to my next video. And tonight we're going to be doing another Friday Comic Challenge. These are put out by Comic Collector Geek. And every Friday he encourages collectors to go through their long boxes and find comics that all share a common theme. And tonight's theme is moon cover. And this has got a real special place in my heart. It's one of my favorite things to have on a cover. So this is going to be a multi-part video. In part one, I'm going to feature comics that have moons on the cover that invoke a mood. And let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, we got this Captain Britain trade paperback or graphic novel put out by Alan Moore, drawn by Alan Davis. And when those two get together, it always is lightning in a bottle. And this comic is no exception. I love that giant moon in the background. It just sets the tone for a great superhero origin story. And I think that this one was a preview for the work they did together on Miracle Man, Marvel Man in the, in the UK. Anyway, let's go ahead and move it on. I gotta hope to get a taste of these covers. These are some of my favorites. This is Alien Worlds put out by PC Comics. And I love that big, heavy, bloated moon in the background. It's always fun to see an alien landscape with a beautiful woman and a moon. Nothing can set the tone like that. And if you catch my drift, I had to do the joke here that there's really two moons on this cover. But let's go ahead and move it on. Next up, we got a comic called The Gun Witch, put out by Oni Press. And I really like this artist style. It sets that Halloween tone, that mood of spooky uh, jack-o'-lanterns, orange and black, and that heavy yellow moon floating above the characters. I really love this comic. Next up, we got Marvel Comics Presents number eight. And that anthology series came out with so many underrated covers. I really like some of the images that they did on their covers. And this one features Wolverine and he's blue. It's that spooky kind of dusk setting and that heavy moon floating behind him. It sure gives off a Halloween spooky atmosphere. Next up, we got Animal Man number 39. And I'm, I like to feature Brian Boland's art a lot of the times. He has such a great job. He does such a great job of uh, capturing humor and a little bit of horror in his covers. And this one's no exception. There's a little humor with a naked guy running around, but he's howling at the moon. And he's got the halo of the moon around his head. I sure like that one. Next up, we got Vampirella. Color special number one, I, and it's just got an Alan Hughes cover. And nobody can capture uh, female uh, provocativeness like Alan Hughes. And this one's no exception. The two images of Vampirella there, and she's sucking her thumb with the blood on it, and that moon hanging above them, above the two figures. It's just uh, vampires and moons go hand in hand. So it makes sense that they'd have a great moon on a Vampirella con. I'm having so much fun. Next up is Bigfoot, number three. Listen to the names on this one. Steve Niles, Rob Zombie, Richard Corbin. And Richard Corbin does the art on this cover. He was big in the 70s and the 80s, and he's kind of trailed off. Not many current uh, collectors know about Richard Corbin, but if you get into his stuff, it's so stylistic and horrific. And this one is no exception. That glowing white moon above Bigfoot. And it's the first time I ever saw Bigfoot presented as a real horrific kill, uh, villain. I, he is definitely not the good guy in this story. It's horrific. Next up, we got Frankenstein, number one, put out by DC. And that Grant Morrison wrote it, but that Doug Mank, I think is his name, did the art. I like this series. I think that that Frankenstein, it should be Frankenstein's monster, is really an underused character. He's almost immortal. And he's presented, he's had some mythos, and there are some rules and limits to his strength. And that's what I like about it. But this one sets that mood of just a Halloween spooky vibe. I really like that. I, and now, there weren't very many Wolverine covers with the moon, but this is Wolverine The End, number one. 
I remember when this one came out, and it was a story, it was kind of supposed to be Logan's or Wolverine's last story, and they did a pretty good job, but these covers, it was such a different uh, tone to Wolverine. He looked a little bit different. He was older, and uh, that bloated moon with the bats flying in front of it, it's such a great image. You can do so many things with the moon on your cover that, well, here's an example of it. It's Providence, uh, put out by Avatar, number four. And Alan Moore wrote this one, and Jason Burroughs did the art. And I think a lot of his art is wasted on these covers. It's a different style. It was all architecture-based. But they proved that just simple architecture can paint an ominous mood. And these were supposed to be H.P. Lovecraft stories that were kind of all intermingled into this Providence story. But that bloated moon hanging up there, it's kind of rotten, and it's setting this yellow light over everything. Oh, it's a spooky story. This really is a twisted series, that Providence. Next up, we got Solar, Man of the Atom, and Valiant. Now, this is number five. Valiant was not going to be left out of the moon cover uh, trend. And this one, there's a couple of solar, and being solar, sun, he's got to have the opposite, the moon, on a lot of his covers. But this was my favorite, and Barry Windsor Smith never fails to capture a provocative image. And that contemplative look that he gives, it's like, yeah, that takes me to a fall evening. Oh, it just is a spooky... Nothing can convey that mood like the moon. And this is another one. Preacher number 26, done by Glenn Fabry, one of my favorite artists. Every image that he does is so, it's almost gross, the details that he's able to include. But I love this Cassidy character with the reflections, and he's always wearing sunglasses, a vampire, and he's falling out of a building with that moon hanging up, up above. And the colors on all of his art are always so well done. I like this Preacher series. Next up, we got JSA number eight, and that Dr. Midnight. What a great character. He's a Golden Age hero that was brought back to current times in this JSA series. And I love all of those Golden Age heroes updated for modern times. And this Dr. Midnight finally gets the right treatment and that moon hanging behind him. And he's got a moon on his costume too. I just really like that character. That's a fun one. Next up, we got Promethea number 14. And these were put out by ABC, America's Best Comics, uh, written by Alan Moore. And I think it's that J.H. Williams III who does the art and something about, every cover has a different style. And this was one that involved all of lunar lore, or the moon lore. And they really investigated. And I, it, it's really captured in this cover, that blue mystical lighting. It really gets you in a certain mood. And there's another one, Mars, that's red and deep. But this blue moon, oh, I really like that cover. Next up, we got Astro City number six. And Alex Ross did a lot of the covers for this series. I really think they're underrated. It's some of his best work in capturing a tone and a mood. And this one with the moon hanging in the background, putting off again that blue light. That's what I was trying to focus on on this first group was just a mood that was set by the image of the moon. Next up, we got Battlefields, The Night Witches, part two of three. And this is number two. This, these, this whole series, written by Garth Ennis, is so underrated. If you can get any of these Battlefields series, they're all good. But these Night Witches, oh, what a great story. And it sets that moon over top of those biplanes in World War II. And, no, no, they're not biplanes, but uh, just the old-style World War II planes, not biplanes. Next up is Solar, Man of the Atom, another one, number 12. And I had to include this one because this is one of the few Frank Miller takes on moon images that I could find. And I really like that. There's kind of a solar power. This, All of these the, it, that came, uh, Valiant issues that came out this month had covers that interlocked and made one large image if you laid them out on the floor. And this, it was kind of a solar being they were finding, but the moon, this is the only cover of that group that had the moon in the background, done by Frank Miller. I like that, where you can see the pock marks and the texture. Next up is Daredevil number two, and this is the Marvel Knights line, and I think this is a J. Scott Campbell image, but I always like it when uh, architecture that's recognizable, this is the Empire State Building in New York, with the moon behind it, and Daredevil and Black Widow swinging in front of it. You could feel that 
uh, autumn spirit of adventure. It's like, ooh, the air is crisp. You can almost see their breath and the texture on the moon. I like that J. Scott Campbell. He can capture some great images. Next up, we got Detective Comics Annual 5. I could not leave out Sam Keith. He always does a great job. And this is where he started to get into all those twists and curls. When fabric was torn, you can see that on Batman's costume. But I love the fuck marks, the technique that he used on the moon, hanging over Batman and the Joker. I think this is one of the most underrated covers of the Joker and Batman ever done. Especially Sam Keith on it? Oh, that really is a great cover right there. Next up is one of my favorites. It's Captain America, number 364. And Crossbones, that villain, is one of my favorites. Every time he makes an appearance, I am interested. And this cover with Captain America's foot caught in a bear trap and Crossbones about to lay the hurt down in that bloated moon hanging over the image. Ah, it's one of my favorites. I really like that one. All right, last up for this group is Basil Wolverton's Planet of Terror, put out by Dark Horse Comics. And this has got an image on it that I enjoy so much. And what I found out about it when I did a little digging even uh, blows up my love for this comic more. It was drawn by Alan Moore. He's an artist, too, and he does very few drawings. But whenever I see anything that he's drawn, I pick it up. And if you look at this cover, you can see that every planet has a face in it. Even those little teeny ones in the background and the moon. It, there's, there's trees that are living and one that looks like a hand that's crawling. And every single object drawn in this cover has a little bit of uh, personification. It's given human-like qualities. And I love seeing secret, hidden things. There's layers upon layers of it. Just like everything that Alan Moore writes. It's how he draws too. So I hope you get a flavor of these moon covers. I've got a ton more. In part two, we're going to jump back in time. It's going to be my older ones from the Silver Age and the Bronze Age. So, well, a couple from the Copper too, but I'm excited. I'm enjoying this. I love the Halloween spirit and I hope you're getting into it too. Thanks for joining me and, and let's visit again in part two. Have a great night.